Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High in Christ Bless. We are back with another 15 minutes with the captains. All right, I'm Captain Mattathias, and some are right. Soldier Stephan. All right, so we got another topic for y'all. Today's topic is entitled The Dangers of Subtle Revenge. The Dangers of Subtle Revenge. All right, so we're, we're about to dive into this topic, but before we do, I want to get a few definitions, all right, real quick. Um, pull up the first one. I want spite. S-P-I-T-E, spite. What does this mean? Read that for me. Yes, sir. This is the definition of spite according to Merriam-Webster. Petty ill will or hatred with the disposition to irritate, annoy, or thwart. Right. So it says petty ill will or hatred with the disposition to irritate, annoy, or thwart. Scroll down a little bit for me, please. Read that second one. Yes, sir. Uh, the definition of spite, to treat maliciously as by shaming or thwarting. You see that? To treat maliciously. So this is what? This is obvious. This is malicious. This is intentional, right? All right, so you've heard that before, right? Doing things out of spite. Yes, so that's what this class is really going into. So before we dive into it, actually, let's dive into it. Yes, sir. Give me Luke chapter 17. And verse 3. All right, let's see what the Most High says about forgiving our brothers and sisters. All right, read that for me. This is the book of, book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 3. Watch this. Take heed to yourselves mm -hmm. if thy brother trespass against thee. Right. It, it, Christ is telling you something right here. He says, take heed to yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's always about you. Right. It's always about how you handle confrontation, uh, variance, being at odds with your brothers and sisters. Because if you handle it wrong, guess what? It may have been something that they did, but you are going to put yourself in a bad situation because you let them get you out of the spirit. So read it again for me. Yes, sir. Come Verse on. 3. Take heed to yourselves uh -huh. if thy brother trespassed against thee. Rebuke him. Correct him. All right? Check him. Let him or her know what they've done. All right? Because that's applying the commandment. Leviticus 19.17. Go ahead. And if... He repents, uh -huh. forgive him. It says, and if he repent, forgive him. Read verse 4. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent. Come on. Thou shalt forgive him. All right. Real quick, give me the book of Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. We're coming right back to where we were. All right. So the scripture said, if your brother offends you, if he trespass against you, says to forgive him. All right, read this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 18. Come on. Thou shalt, thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge. Thou shalt what? Not avenge or bear any grudge Come on. against the children of thy people. I hope you see that. That's why Christ said that in verse 3. He said, take heed unto yourself. Why? So you don't bear a grudge against your brother. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Why? Because sometimes certain offenses, what? It's hard to move on past. Right. That's why Christ said, take heed unto yourself, all right? From there, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 2. All right, so keep in mind, brothers and sisters, we're building upon something right here. Today's topic is the dangers of subtle revenge, meaning what? When you do something in subtility, it's not obvious. Do me a favor, IT. Pull up that definition for me, subtle, subtle. They need to hear that thing right there. Yes, sir. This is de the, the definition of subtle according to Merriam-Webster. Subtle, cunning, crafty, sagacious, discerning. Right. When you do something in a cunning or crafty manner, you're doing what? You're trying to throw people off. But deep down inside, you know exactly what you're doing. Right. All right, so today's topic, once again, is the dangers of subtle revenge. Give me that, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Yes, sir, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10. Come on. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. Read. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for, you, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Forgave I in the person of Christ. Because Paul, he would be what? He would be traveling doing the work of an apostle, teaching the gospel, right? So at this particular church in Corinth, he said, okay, if you forgive it, I forgive it also. Let's see why. Read. Verse 11. Lest Satan. Lest who? Lest Satan. Come on. Should get an advantage of us. You see that thing right there? That's why Christ said, take heed of yourselves. 
Because why? Satan's going to be in the mix. Right. Satan is the one who wants you to have those grudges. He wants you to have that ill will, that maliciousness towards your brothers. Finish that off. For we are not ignorant of his devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. But guess what, brothers and sisters? When these things come along, it's easier said than done. Right. That's why we got to meditate and study daily, all right, on these scriptures. Let's go to the next one. Give me 1 Timothy chapter 5. So, when it, when it comes to forgiving, I know a lot of people say, you know, bro, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. A lot of people think that's a justification to hold a grudge. No, 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 no. All that saying is what? You need to forgive quick, and you can watch that, brother or sister, from that time forward. And we're going to show you that in the scriptures. 1 Timothy 5, 22. Yes, sir. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 22. Come on. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Come on. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Meaning what? If this brother or this sister trans transgressed against you or trespassed against you, the scripture tells you don't co-sign or don't lay hands or credit this person hastily or suddenly. Don't be rash in that thing. Read it again. Yes, sir. Lay hands suddenly on no man, uh -huh. neither be partaker of any man's sins. Give me the one in Sirach 19. We're coming right back to that. Yes, sir. All right, so brothers and sisters, just because what we read in Luke 17 when it says to forgive your brother uh, for his transgression, that doesn't mean now, you know, I forgive you. Now I'm going to ignore everything you've done. That's not what the Bible's telling you to do. It's saying forgive that brother or sister, so what? So now you're not in jeopardy of not, of not being forgive. That's what it's talking about. Read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 19 and verse 5. Four. Four. He that is hasty to give credit. It says he that is hasty. Uh, Timothy says suddenly. So it says he that is hasty to give credit. Go ahead. Is light-minded. Is what? Is light-minded. Is light-minded. That's it on that? No, sir. Come on. And he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. There you go. There you go. Now you're putting yourself in harm's way to be duped again. All right? Sure. So you got to watch, brothers and sisters. All right? It's, it's about a pattern of good works. If they're showing fruits worthy of repentance over a span of time, yeah, you can start letting them back in. Yes, sir. All right? But you would be a fool to credit them so quickly. All right, from there, give me the book of Sirach, chapter 28, verse 1. All right, so we're getting somewhere, brothers and sisters. The Scriptures gives us advice and it gives us counsel on how to govern ourselves in our daily issues, in our daily trials. All right, read this. The book of Sirach, chapter 28, and verse 1. Come on. He that revengeth shall find vengeance. You see that? That's why Christ said, take heed unto yourselves. Don't revenge your neighbor. It says to forgive your neighbor. Read it again. He that revengeth shall find vengeance from the Lord. Because if you revenge him, the Lord's going to jack you up. But think about it like this. Why is it so hard to forgive your neighbor? Think about all of the times you trespassed against the Most High. You got to think about that. We have to meditate on those things and think about that. So it should not be so much to forgive our neighbor. All right. All right? We just got to use wisdom about the thing. Read and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Right. So if you want your sins to be forgotten, guess what? When it comes to that brother or that sister, you got to let it go. All right? Read on. Verse 2. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. It's going to hurt. It's going to sting. It is what it is, though. But the Scripture is telling us through much tribulation, we're going to go through a lot of trials. Right. And think about the persecution to come. If we can't get over things like this, there goes the Judases. There becomes the betrayers. Right. You got to understand that thing, brothers and sisters. If you can't forgive the hurt now, you will betray your own people. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 2. Come on. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he hath done unto thee. Uh-huh. So shall thy sins also be forgiven. That's the only way we're going to make the kingdom, brothers and sisters. Read on. When thou prayest, one man beareth hatred against another. Mm -hmm. And doth he seek pardon from the Lord? Right. So you, you think that you're righteous, you're praying three times a day. But you're praying with hatred against another brother. Mm. Hatred against your wife. Hatred against your husband. And you think that the Lord's going to answer your prayers? Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 3. One man beareth hatred against another. Uh -huh. And doth he seek pardon from the Lord? Come on. He showeth no mercy. He showeth no mercy. Meaning what? I don't care what you say. I'm not going to forgive you. I'll never trust you again. Go ahead. He showeth no mercy to a man, uh -huh. which is like himself. Which is just like himself. What, what verse you at? Verse 4, sir. Come on. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? You see how hypocritical that thing is? Mm. So we have to do what? We got to apply these scriptures. We got to take a seat, all right, and think about our actions and make sure they're in accordance to what the Bible says. Give me Hebrews 10 and 31. 
Because a lot of brothers and sisters, this is what you fail to remember. Before you give me that, give me Sirach. No, 2 Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 19. And then I want Hebrews 10. What a lot of us forget is that there is a God. There is a God. When you have a vengeful spirit, that means you, will, you want to take things into your own hands. That means you're not patient to let God deal with it. This even goes to situations with your spouse. Let's just say it's not on the level of adultery, right? Because obviously you know what the scripture says about adultery. All right, yes, all right? That's the only reason, unless it be for fornication. That's the only reason you can part ways. Let's just say it's something that's very grievous in the marriage, though. You still have to forgive your spouse. Mm. You still got to forgive your spouse because your prayers are going to be hindered. And most importantly, if your spouse has done something with ill intent and they did it maliciously, God's going to deal with them. Right. It's not up for you. You said what you had to say to keep the peace. But now if they don't want to turn from that, hey, don't miss out on the kingdom because you're holding a grudge against this person you, you go to sleep with every night. Yes, sir. There is a God. Read this. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 10 and verse 19. Come 7 and 19. Yes, sir. 2 Ezra, chapter 7, verse 19. Read the book, that. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 19. Come on. And he said unto me, there is no judge above God. It says there is no judge above who? Above God. That's it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And none that have understanding above the highest. Right, and none that have understanding above the highest. Now give me the one in Hebrews 10. All right, Hebrews uh, chapter 10 and verse 31. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 31. Watch this, y'all. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Right, the Bible says that it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So at the end of the day, you may think you're getting back at somebody, but if somebody really trespassed against you and they were had ill intent, there's nothing that you can do that can pay them back better than the most high God. Right. Never forget that thing. So it's time that what? We got to forgive and let that thing go and move on. All right, from there, give me Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. All right? Because brothers and sisters, point blank period, if you don't, if we don't, we're going to miss out on the kingdom of heaven. Read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 3 and verse 11. Come on. Behold, I come quickly. He does what? I come quickly. Christ said he's coming quickly. We don't have that much time left. We see the wars. We see the pestilence. Right. You understand? We see the most High bringing the earthquakes. He's coming back quickly. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 11. Uh-huh. Behold, I come quickly. Uh-huh. Hold that fast which thou hast. The, 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 the commandments that we have God is saying to hold on to that fast, diligently, all right? Make sure we're being circumspect to the commandments of God, uh-huh. That no man take thy crown. That what? No man take thy crown. We read these scriptures, but we really don't think about what it's actually saying. Right. It says, let no man, meaning what? There's going to come differences between us. There's going to come offenses between us. Right. But it's all about how you handle it, brothers and sisters. From there, give me... Uh, Proverbs chapter 17, going into some of those offenses, all right? Proverbs chapter 17, and I want you to start at verse 14. Yes, sir. All right, watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 14. Come on. The beginning of strife is, a, is as when one letteth out water. It says the beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Meaning what? <clears throat> Think about it like this. You got different bodies of water, right? You have a river that flows into the ocean. All right, let's just say you had something that was, let's say, very valuable to you in this particular uh, river, okay? But as soon as that opening is there, guess what happens? It's going to flow right into the ocean, and then it's gone. Right. All right, so the Scripture's telling us, read it again. Yes, sir. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Right, you're letting a breach take place mm -hmm. between you and that brother. And guess what? Eventually, what's going to happen is going to get out of hand to the point where you can't get it back. Mm. It's going to be ruined. It's not going to be there anymore. That's why the scripture says this. Read on. Therefore, leave off contention. Mean, do what? Leave off contention. Close that breach as quickly as you can. Read. Before it be meddled with. Before it be meddled with, meaning what? To this the point where it's unmanageable and it's destroyed. Right. It may have started as something little. But because you weren't diligent in making sure that this fire was put out, now it became something way worse than you could have ever expect it. Yes, Give me Luke chapter 17, verse 1. 
This is why the scripture is telling us what to do. The scripture tells us what? Take heed. Luke 17 and 1 is going to tell us what? Watch this. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 1. Come on. Then said he unto the disciples, it is impossible but that offenses will come. Read. But woe. But what? But woe. That's destruction. Unto him through whom they come. Right. It says woe, destruction, meaning what? If you don't take heed, if you don't handle it right, destruction is going to come to you. That's what the scripture is telling us through, from Genesis to Revelation. Multiple examples on how to handle ourselves with wisdom. Okay? So we got to make sure if we have these issues that come up with each other, we got to put out the fire quickly because we all know what time it is. Yes, the longer we let it fester, the longer we let it meddle, what's going to happen? Explode. It's going to explode and it's going to get worse. Yes, and then it's going to be without remedy. Okay? We want to make sure we are not in danger of that. Okay? From there, give me the book of Proverbs chapter 12. Do me a favor, Proverbs 29 and 11. Yes, sir. All right, so we got to make sure, even when we have these issues, even when we have these odds with our brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that we're rolling with wisdom. You're not going to say the first thing that comes to your mind, because normally what? That's your emotions. Right. The Scriptures tells us to roll with wisdom. Read what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 11. Uh-huh. A fool uttereth all his mind. The Bible says what? A fool uttereth all his mind. Uh-huh. But a wise man keepeth it till afterwards. Read it again. Yes, sir. A fool uttereth all his mind. Come on. But a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Right. So he could gather his thoughts because he knows the first thing that he's going to say is full. It's going to be some emotions. It's going to be some bull. You understand? That's right. So a wise brother, a wise sister, they're going to gather their thoughts and they're going to speak with wisdom yes, and not just ramble and say stuff that they can't take back. Mm. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Now give me Proverbs 12 and 22. Yes, Here's the... The class in a nutshell right here. Remember, today's topic is the dangers of subtle revenge. Not the obvious, but subtle revenge. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 22. Come on. Lying lips are abomination the to Bible the Lord. The Bible says what? A lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Meaning what? When you say, you know what, bro? We good. You know, y'all get off the phone or y'all in person. Say, hey, you know what, bro? I know we had an op, but we good. Right. But you know, deep down inside, you got hatred towards that brother. You got hatred towards your wife, or you got hatred towards that sister. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, uh -huh. but they that deal truly are his delight. Right, but they that deal truly are his delight. From there, give me uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. We got to make sure that we're not rolling the way we used to, right? We got to walk in the newness of life as new creatures in Christ, brothers and sisters. Read this, Ephesians 4, 22. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 22. Come on. That ye put off concerning the former conversation. Right. We got to put off the former conversation. Do me a favor. Jump down to verse 29. Yes, sir. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And, and guess what? Lying, that's corrupt communication. Right. You know good and well that you ain't good with that brother or that sister, but you lied to them. But now, guess what? Every chance you get... You say a little here, a little there. You try to set them up. You understand? Because you're rolling in a malicious spirit. Right. You're rolling in a spiteful spirit because you, deep down, you have hatred towards that brother. Or you have hatred towards your wife. You understand? Scriptures say don't do that. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Come on. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Right. Anything you say should be to the use of edification. All right? If it's to the use to demean or to make a brother or sister look bad, that's not the spirit of Christ, all right? And a lot of brothers and sisters do that because what? Something may have happened in the past, and they never really forgave that person. Right. Now they're out to get them, and they don't even see it anymore. They don't even see it anymore. Read on. Yes, sir. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Come on. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. And that's the key. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God. You know that when you say you're in this truth and you profess godliness, right, and you, 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 you teach others, but now it comes time for you to apply it, you know what you're doing, right? Hypocrite. You're being a hypocrite, and you are doing what? Read that verse again. Yes, sir. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. You are grieving the Holy Spirit of God. Give me, give me the law. Give me Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 7. You are grieving the Holy Spirit. 
Okay, watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 7. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Meaning what? You profess godliness, but you don't do any of the commandments. This is in vain. Your whole walk is in vain. Mm. Understand that thing, brothers and sisters. It said lying lips is an abomination unto God. Right. God hates that. So if you're saying you forgive your brother, you're saying you forgive your wife or your husband, but your actions don't show, all of this is in vain. Right. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Come on. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. The Lord will what? Not hold him guiltless. You won't be innocent. You know why? Because you wouldn't forgive your brother. You wouldn't forget your, your sister or your wife or your husband. So you're not going to be held guiltless in the day of judgment. Drop that. Yes, sir. Uh, go back to Ephesians. Read verse 32. Yes, sir. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 32. We're going to speed up a little bit. Yes, sir. And be ye kind one to another. The Bible says be ye what? Kind one to another. Come on. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Doing what? Forgiving one another. Mm -hmm. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And that's what we always have to remember. Right. Give me 2 Timothy 2. We almost done. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I want verse 24 through 26. Yes, always remember the sacrifice that Christ made for you. All right? That the Most High God saw it fit to send his son to die for our sins. The least we could do is forgive our brothers and sisters. Read this. The book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 24. Uh-huh. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Must what? Must not strive. Meaning what? Hold on to the grudges, striving with his brothers and sisters. Even though it might not be obvious, you know if you got that spirit of subtle revenge. Right. Subtle revenge. Meaning what? It's not obvious, but it's there. It's there. And you are the only person who truly knows that. Mm. And you're putting yourself in danger of the judgment. Read it again. Yes, sir. Verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive. Come on. But be gentle unto all men. Read. Apt to teach. Uh-huh. Patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. That's the thing about it. Why don't you be the good example to the one that trespass against you? Mm. How about you instruct them that oppose themselves? Who fell in transgression? How about that? Read. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth and that they may recover themselves. That they may what? Recover themselves. It's about them, not you. That's why Christ said take heed because if you allow what they have done to you to affect you, you are going to lose your crown. Mm. Pray for them to recover themselves. Forgive them so they can get themselves right. Don't take on that burden and destroy yourself. Right. Read that verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 26. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Out of the snare of the devil because they got the devil on them. All right. Proverbs 20 and 3. Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 20 and 3. Then we go into Sarah. All right. So today's topic is the dangers of subtle revenge. All right. And that's what we're going to close out with, some of the dangers of it. Go ahead. The book of Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 3. Come on. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. It is a what? Honor. God said that's an honorable thing, just like marriage is honorable. But he says it's an honorable thing to cease from strife. Like I say in 1 Peter 2, it's honorable what? So when you're being buffeted but you didn't do nothing wrong, right, right. that's an honorable thing. Yes, sir. It's not honorable to uh, be buffeted and you actually did something wrong. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's about you rising above and being the bigger man. Right. Read that again. Yes, sir. Verse 3. Go ahead. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. Uh-huh. But every fool will be meddling. But fools, the devilish, the hateful, the, the wicked, they are going to keep the strife going. They're going to keep the subtle revenge going until they die the death. Mm. So, brothers and sisters, this class is for you. Yes, sir. This class is for you so you can overcome so you don't miss out on the kingdom. Give me Sirach chapter 28, verse 7. Yes, sir. Watch this. Sirach chapter 28. And verse 7. Watch this. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 28 and verse 7. Come on. Remember the commandments and bear no malice and to thy neighbor. And bear no what? No malice. Give me that definition. Malice. Scriptures say bear no malice to thy neighbor. Let's pull up that definition. This is the definition of malice according to Merriam-Webster. Uh-huh. Desire to cause pain, injury, or distress to another. You see that thing? It says the desire to cause pain, injury, or distress to another. Mm. And you could do that a lot of times without even saying anything. Okay? You could do that in it's other forms. It's a lot of different forms. Just make sure you're not guilty of that thing. Make sure you have your emotions in check. Okay? Make sure you're not just trying to destroy another brother or a sister. Right. 
All right. From there, drop that. Yes, sir. Give me uh, Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And we got three more scriptures. We're going to be done. Yes, sir. Watch this. The book of Mark chapter 11 and verse 25. Uh-huh. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. So we had to bring this back again. Never forget. If you want forgiveness, you must forgive. Yes, sir. Okay? And don't fool yourself because you can fool yourself and say, I forgive that, brother. But you know deep down inside you have the subtle revenge. You know you have that spirit. Okay? You may be able to deceive a few, but you ain't going to deceive God. Right. Uh, is, that 15, is that 26 with that? Uh, no, sir. Read 26. Uh, yes, sir. 26. But if ye do not forgive neither... Will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses? Right. So if you don't forgive them, the Most High ain't going to forgive you. Sirach 27 and verse 30. Sirach chapter 27, verse 30. Watch this, y'all. The book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 30. Come on. Malice and wrath. Even these are abomination. Even these are what? Are abomination. And the sinful man shall have them both. Right. It says malice and wrath are something hateful to God. Mm. And we know when we read Revelations 21 and 8, it says that what? The abominable, they are not going to make the kingdom of heaven. Right. All right? Uh, 1 Peter 2, 1. And we'll end right here, actually. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Meaning what? If, we, if we, we can't overcome with subtle revenge, forgiving our brothers and sisters. All right? Because guess what? You may have never gone through this, but at some point in your walk, you will. All right. At some point in your walk, you will. Now, nobody is exempt from, from this. All right, so if we can't forgive, understand that there is going to be a judgment for it. <clears throat> All right, read this. Yes, sir. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Laying aside all what? All malice. We got to lay it aside. Read. And all guile. Uh-huh. And hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. Read. As newborn babes desire to censor milk of the word. Read on. That ye may grow thereby. And that's what this truth is always about. We want to continue to grow, all right? We want to continue to grow, but having this uh, burden or having this disease, that's really what it is. Yes, having this disease meaning what? You're stunting your growth, and eventually you're going to wither away if you don't overcome. So this has been another 15 minutes with the captain. So I'm Captain Matathias. Soldier Stephan. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. family.